date is August 31st, 2021, and This Week in Modern returns with more coverage of the modern format for you. I am Mean Mono Green of Lanwar. Let's get to the news. Today we'll be covering this week's preliminary tournaments, weekend challenges, 5-0 features, and finally, the trophy tussle. The Jun fans are out in force after last Saturday's challenge win by Bullwinkle's John Sagavan list, with the most popular high performer of this week's prelims being tweaks and tests of that archetype, edging out even the combined numbers of the Cascade archetypes. Team Rhinos is back on top of the Cascade game with five appearances to two from Living End. Classic Burn continues to see a small comeback with the newer Burn 2021 or White Red DRC aggro deck making a single appearance. Belcher, hot off a top eight, only made one appearance, suggesting that the pure linear combo deck may not be as appealing or perhaps as powerful as some had thought it might be. The Wapo Tapa control deck, even with a bump from popular streamer and longtime Mythic Championship competitor Gabriel Nassif, has fallen off a bit in success, perhaps due to the abundance of Jun Sagavan, perhaps due to just general distraction of modern players. And the prelims had some delightful one-off appearances, including Naya Reclaimer, a Jeskai brought back ephemerate Stoneblade Kiki Jiki deck, and Blue Green Tron. We also spotted Blue Red Prowess with a small white splash. This Week in Modern presents Challenge Recap. We've seen some exciting challenge wins over the last few weeks from unexpected archetypes, and this week is no different, with Wafo Tapa taking down his third challenge in as many weeks with Four Color Creativity, featuring Velomachus Lorehold. That's right, not blue-white control that he's been dominating with as of late. But Wafo has brought his signature deck-building style to this archetype, featuring a singleton copy of defunct counter Manalik and a full grip of Apocalypse split card and format staple, Fire Ice. The breakout story of last Saturday's challenge was the development and success of John Sagavan and Red Green Delirium as two variants of an emerging modern power couple, Ren and Six and Urza Saga. This challenge has continued to show the development and success of these decks with the other participant in the finals, Oscar Franco, piloting the Jun version and another copy of the same deck in sixth place but there were many more representatives of these kind of mid-range decks all the way down the top 32. Jun variations appearing at 10th and 15th, and Naya varieties with Traverse the Ulvenwald in 11th and 13th. The top eight was filled out with Max Magister continuing to destroy on Teamer Footballs with an 8-0 run to the top eight before falling in the semi-finals. Mono White Hammer was the other semi-finals deck, with Blue-White Chalice, Four Color Rhinos, and Blue-Black Mill filling out the top eight. Mill is a reasonably positioned deck in the format that's been struggling to find big-time competitive success, but Grayus TV managed this top eight with the dangerous Decapod Dispatch. Finally of note, three other Indomitable Creativity decks in 26th, 27th, and 28th place respectively, one with two Emrakul, one with the Mr. Raeb style split of Sarah's Emissary and Emrakul. And finally, Cedric Phillips rolling in hard with Creativity Titan featuring Strike It Rich, but no copies of Wish, which we mentioned last week. This challenge had some slightly more narrow results than the last couple of weeks, but there was plenty of experimentation within archetypes. Saturday's challenge had an archetype finally getting a challenge win after slowly gaining popularity, and the Sunday challenge shares that amazing quality with Yogmoth Combo finally getting a win in the hands of player Hoodie66. Hoodie even talked about some budget choices in his sideboard after the fact, proving that tight play and a little luck is sometimes a match for less than optimal construction. A surge of blue red Murktide takes up almost half of the top eight in third, fourth, and fifth place but Suicidal Eidolon managed to smash through to the finals on the never-to-be-underestimated Mono White Hammer time. Andy Awkward also showed up in the top eight, leaving his hammers at home to play Teamer Rhinos. Tybalt of the Red Sub, playing a more stock list than he's played otherwise, 
got Blue Black Mill a second top eight appearance in the weekend. And finally, Mono Green Tron made an appearance, making sure people don't forget the card Stone Rain or Ceremonious Rejection. Jun Sagavan showed up in force all the way down the top 32 with six decks appearing between 15th and 27th. Eldrazi Tron made its only appearance of the weekend in 16th place, showing off the recent return of Basilisk Color to the Spaghetti Squad's roster. In spicy appearances, in 32nd place, Dragon Fodder showed up with Black Red Skelementals featuring Modern Staples, Stitcher Supplier, Insolent Neonate, Village Rites, and Spite Bellows. There's one more sizzling deck that made a placement here in 30th place that we'll talk about in the 5-0 appearances. The Brewer's story of the week had to be the 5-0 and subsequent popularity of a deck featuring Calibrated Blast. Brewer and streamer Dylan MTG developed this deck that finally answers the question of how best to win with a dialed-in explosion. Don't dial it in. Just make sure it has a very high chance of dealing 12, 14, 15, or even 16 damage. This, coupled with Forgotten Modern Horizons 1 Cascade card, Throws of Chaos, and 40 lands, gives you a reasonable chance to do your thing. But the lands don't just make mana, they make hay with Mishra's Factory and Sun Scorched Desert, and even Ramanap Ruins offering some chip damage. Radiant Fountains for some life gain, and a fetch triome mana base allowing you to cast your Scion of Draco for a paltry 2 mana. These decks are being developed and tweaked by the dozens who seem to have picked it up, so watch out for this potential new menace. Toolbox Master Mordekaiser, originally known for Niv-Mizzet fame, has recently picked up streaming more consistently. And after hitting both a 5-0 and a challenge thought top 32 with Brought Back Recruiter, has managed to bring back a 5-0 for fans of Enigmatic Incarnation. This Theros enchantment creates a unique deck building constraint involving enchantments and toolbox creatures, and it's a joy to watch. You can watch these toolbox creations at twitch.com slash mord to life. Canada Man 101 continues to be an innovator and intimidator with a 5-0 on a black-green rock claimer list with Urza Saga. So if you're feeling like registering Grim Flare, don't miss it. Player Dihimono got the posting with a new Aspiring Spike developed deck, One Rack. Spike asked the question, is Liliana the Veil better in Black White Pox than Lurus would be? And how many racks do I really need? Only one if it's a good one. Looking at this deck list, your opponent will be prompted to tell you, nice rack. DJP000 got a posting with a deck that seems to be blue-white creature midrange control with the full boat of supreme verdicts alongside a creature suite including four sun titans and a mana base with a myriad of the sky ruin and the theoretical plan to get it online. Player Grilled Cheese snagged a posting with black red Asmora Gorio's Vengeance with four Emrakul the Aeon's Torn and some Gristle Brands. Valkyrie 099 on a Blue Moon deck with two main deck batter skulls, and there were so many more. The modern format is wide open for experimentation, and there are so many people finding ways to succeed with wild brews, but our coverage of the trophy tussle between some of the juggernauts of the format continues. This Week in Modern presents the Trophy Tussle. With two weeks and 12 hours remaining in the trophy tussle, it's heating up after Aspiring Spike doubled down on his bet last week. Once again, Aspiring Spike has promised 200 and now 400 gift subs to his Twitch chat if he is not the trophy leader at the end of the season. He managed to close the gap with Y Principe this week, and the two have been trading the lead position back and forth over the last few days. So let's take a look at the board and see where they are now. In first place, your trophy leader, Aspiring Spike, with 35 trophies. In second, the Tron Menace Y Principe with 34. Third place, Canister MTG with 24. Hot on his heels, Tunneling Cat with 23 trophies. And closing out the leaderboard, MTGO Bazaar with 20 trophies. However, tied for that last slot are both Andy Awkward and Silent Sea Song, each with 20 trophies. 
Storm aficionado Hugo Freitas is hanging around at 19 trophies, and Caruso and Doomwake are still competitive at 18. During his time off stream this weekend, Aspiring Spike managed to get back to back trophies, revisiting his black red Luris mid range deck with the inclusion of Den of the Bugbear. Why Principe has found time to goof around on stream though, playing lists like Boomer Gtron with no copies of Car and the Great Creator, and he's been messing around with some of Aspiring Spike's own brews. Tunneling Cat has made it her mission to take on Canister MTG who is again away for the rest of the week or so. So she may be able to take the juicy prize of 10 treasure chests that are being provided by This Week in Modern. Tunneling Cat is of course the closest to taking that third spot away from Canister, but two weeks is plenty of time for last minute upsets, even from people we may not have mentioned. Well, that's it for this episode of This Week in Modern. You can contact me at twimmtg on twitter.com or email us at thisweekinmodern at gmail.com and before we go, we here at This Week in Modern would like to give a big, beautiful welcome back to streamer and Blue Moon innovator Jacob Kamiski, who has recently returned to the modern world. So if you want to see all the best of Blue Moon brews, Blue Red Merktide, and anything associated with Blood Moon's Electrolyze, Lightning Bolt, and Snapcaster Mage, you can check him out at twitch.com slash Jacob Kamiski. This is Mean Monogreen of Lanwar wishing you the best of top decks, and the best of luck. Play safe.